one thing your brain expects is change. And the primary place it expects change, well, inside your body, the internal pressure gradient changes, but also from the ground. And I talk about that a lot. So when your weight is on the left leg, it's expecting, and it's, well, it's noticing pressure coming up from the ground, pushing up into your left foot, and it knows you're on your left leg. And then when you go to your right leg, it, it feels and experiences the pressure coming up from the ground, pushing into your right foot, so it knows you're on your right leg. When you're on your right leg because you're in a pattern, you oversense pressure on the right side, it becomes completely normal and customary and the norm, uh, and you lose pressure on the left side. And because you're still oriented to the right, every time you put your left foot down, you don't actually get all the pressure it should get and not in the correct places, particularly underneath the left heel. That's why the left heel is so important. You gotta get left heel pressure with your weight transferring to the left foot completely, not being still stuck on the right foot. Uh, and when that happens, your brain says, oh, I'm on the left side, the right side can relax. And now you have normal walking, forward movement. Okay, so pressure, is, pressure changes are important. The other important part obviously is sensory input. And this is what I've had some interesting discoveries. I've been in a search for years of, to find, whether I knew it or not, was to find the proper sensory input that my brain could use to make sense of my life, to make sense of my position, to make sense of where the ground was. And uh, we have to have, we have to use that sensory input in an integrated way. Now, the interesting thing is this. You have two feet, obviously. However, are your left foot and your right foot exactly the same? Probably not. I have found that when I put a low arch insole underneath my left foot and a high arched insole underneath my right foot, because my right arch is higher, I feel a lot better and I move a lot better. So which means it's, it's changing my brain's ability to sense the ground as I'm walking and I get better pronation of the right foot because I've, I have that higher arch underneath it which then allows me to get better left heel strike. When I'm not getting left heel strike, do you know where I feel discomfort? My big left toe, classic, the big left toe pain. Uh, when your big left toe is painful, you're in a pattern. And so sometimes I'm walking and I've been experimenting with this with shoes because I've been trying to find the perfect pair of sneakers for me, which I didn't know, I'm not sure if I would ever find. And as I was doing this, uh, I'd start, you know, as I'm walking, I'd start to feel my left big toe and I'm like, damn it, I know I'm going into the pattern. Now, I didn't know whether that was the eyes or just the shoes. I think a lot of it was the eyes because two weeks ago I went down to a, I drove four hours for an eye exam and it turns out I needed to increase my prescription. Um, so, but I have found that low arch on my left foot, high arch insole on my right foot, and I move a lot better and I feel all the proper movements of my feet proper movement of my feet, yeah. I feel that right arch, I feel pushing through with the big toe on the right side, which I usually never really felt that well, and I'm not feeling my left big toe, and everything feels pretty good. Okay, so my brain likes input from two different insoles that are not the same, because I don't like the same. I don't like, yes, I'll get into that later. Psychologically, I don't like the same either. Like, it just wipes me out. Everything that's the same, I just, ugh, I can't stand it. Okay, now moving up to my eyes. We know my visual system does not like the same input from both eyes, or maybe it's not giving the same input from both eyes, but ah, whatever. The point being, my left eye has a 2.75 contact in the left and a 2.50 in the right. Interestingly, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I'm pretty sure that my left eye is actually technically stronger clarity-wise. However, my brain likes to use my right eye more. It likes to process that information from my right eye more than it does from the left. And that was the story of my life. That was why, uh, that was the suppression of my left visual field that was going on. And I've made videos about that last summer. So if you're like, what are you talking about? You can find them. Uh, so my brain does not treat each eye the same. And that goes for a lot of people. The eyes don't are not the same on both sides. So again, different input. My brain prefers different input uh, from each eye. Now, the other thing I found recently is my ears. I don't know what it is yet. I'm getting a hearing exam, um, an auditory system hearing exam, I guess you would call it, on Wednesday. So I'm excited for that. But what I have found is that uh, when I plug my right ear, I am technically 
Well, I'm doing a couple things. I'm decreasing airflow into my ear, but I'm also decreasing volume in my right ear. So what I'm doing is I'm changing uh, volume and maybe frequency, I don't know, but it's change. It's different on both sides. And I feel better. I feel looser. Uh, I feel more relaxed. So it doesn't surprise me that I need different input through my feet, different input through my eyes, and different input through my ears for my body to be good, to be to feel really comfortable. And I actually slept with um, tissue paper in my right ear, and I woke up this morning and I felt great, like I had no back tension at all. Because usually when I wake up in the morning and I put my feet on those flat floor, flat, flat floors, uh, that are not uneven because we like uneven the human brain expects uneven ground and which we do not give it uneven ground because we're walking on flat wood floors uh, In the morning My back usually gets a little tight until I can give it change until I can give it sensory input That's different and I usually do it through my feet and you know shifting from side to side but what was really interesting since I had the, the, the Tissue paper in my right ear. I didn't have any back tension this morning so that's my next uh, <laughs> that's my next inquiry is how my auditory system is uh, playing a role in my patterns because it definitely can I just don't know how extreme it would not be surprised if there is something there since I was only using one eye for 40 years or you know I was partially or at least partially suppressing the visual field or partially suppressing the image from my left eye. I wasn't doing it, my brain was doing it. So would that change how my brain is using my auditory system? Maybe, and we shall see. But all I know right now is chain difference, having a difference between the left side and the right side of my left foot, my right foot, my left eye, my right eye, my right ear, my left ear, change, however that change is, doesn't really matter it seems, just has to be different, allows my body to not be what? PEC, a PEC. Extended on both sides, pelvis forward, rib cage up on both sides. A PEC is like, you know, it's almost like someone who has one body instead of two halves. Because remember, you have a right side and a left side, and they are not the same. And someone who is PEC, like a lot of times when you work with them, they might not feel anything properly. If you have two feet on the wall at once, they might not feel both hamstrings. So what I have to do with them is I have to make sure that uh, that they can just take one uh, one foot off and then put the other one on and take the other one off and sense changes in pressure so that their brain can figure out which foot they're on because if there's not enough difference, their brain can't perceive where they are in space. They're, it's like a PEC is someone who's lost pressure change acknowledgement, pressure change awareness. Uh, their brain can't figure out where they are because it can't discern right from left. And we can't discern right from left. You might be right in the middle or you might be a little bit more to the right, but you don't really have either side. So what you got to do with a lot of PECs is you got to get them sensing difference so that they can relax. Uh, so that is just uh, for people who do PRI and you work with PECs, you might want to try alternating hamstrings in a 90-90 position or the all fours position, alternating pressure as they do, pick one arm up. Uh, they have to feel differences between the right side and the left side to get their PEC-ness to, re to, to relax, to get to reestablish a right side and a left side because they're just one. And when you're one, that's like, that's like, that's like conforming to concrete, flat. It's just threatening because it's just flat and you're matching that flat, you're becoming one just because the uneven, the ground is so flat and threatening. So that's an analogy, it's not great, but uh, just another way to look at it. So, but I also think the other interesting thing is I think psychologically, I am I also reflect the fact that I can't do the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, I like change in my life, I like variety, I like to do different things. And when I have to do the same thing over and over and over again, like a nine to five job, punching the clock, doing the same task over and over again, uh, it just sucks the life out of me. So some people love that stuff, but that's not me. So think psychologically, think physically, you know, link up how you experience life and how you experience your body. And I think you'll find some interesting correlations.